Professor Orgley is here. We saved our code. We then did a commit with Git, and I'm hoping that you're going to build that routine. So I save the code, do a commit. Save the code, do a commit. After you do that, it's going to just become a routine, and things will become much easier for you when using Git. We're going to come back to the slides. We are going to start on slide number 11, and I want to make sure this is crystal clear because you're gonna see this on the exam, on the midterm, which is coming up very shortly. Now let's talk about overlapping elements and the z-index property. When elements are positioned, they have the opportunity to overlap other elements. Now the z-index property specifies the stack order of an element. We talked about that in the comments, but let's make sure that's crystal clear. And that means which elements should be placed in front or behind the others. That's what the stack order means. I always like to think of it as a stack of plates. The only difference is the stack of plates isn't going horizontally. It's actually going towards you in the Z axis. That's why it's called the Z index property. So the stack of plates is coming out of the screen at you in a 3D effect. Now, an element can have a positive or negative stack order. An element with a greater stack order is always in front, keyword in front of an element with a lower stack order. So you can think of it as a computer graphics problem. I have my X axis, which is horizontally, my Y axis, which is vertically on the screen. And then I have my Z axis, which is coming out of the screen towards you. So zero, zero on X, Y is gonna be the top left. And then if I have Z, access as positive is going to be coming out of the screen. If I have Z access as negative, it's going to be going into the screen. So that's a little bit of computer graphics there, and you need to know these for web development. Now, Z index only works on positioned elements. Not all positioned elements, only absolute, relative, or fixed. Now, that is probably going to be a quiz question. Static elements don't matter because that's the normal flow of a page and most likely nothing's gonna be on top of each other. However, if I do a position absolute, there can be an overlapping element. If I have a position relative or fixed, there can definitely be an overlapping element. Now, which one do I want to be on top? So if two position elements overlap without a Z index specified, the element positioned at last in the HTML code will be shown on top. Definitely going to be a question there. You'll see there's a note. Notes are usually good quiz questions or exam questions. Why is it going to be on top if it's positioned last? Well, think about HTML. We've said this many times. It's loaded sequentially. So it goes line by line and loads all the elements. Well, let's say I have a paragraph tag, and then I have the next paragraph tag. Well, it's loaded last, so it's going to be placed on top, okay, because the HTML code is loaded sequentially. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have an H1, it's a heading, and I have an image, okay? And then I have a paragraph tag that explains the image. Now, I want this image to be behind the H1 and the paragraph tag so it looks like it's on top of the image. Well, how do I do that? Well, first, I can use Z-index. Remember, positive Z-index numbers are shown on top. So I could do a Z-index of a negative one. That's gonna put everything behind because the H1 and the paragraph tag have a Z index of zero by default. So if I do negative one, it's gonna go behind the default elements. Now, I don't just want it to go behind, I actually want to change the position of the element so the H1 and the paragraph tag are on top of each other. So if I do position absolute, it's gonna be based off its nearest ancestor position. Well, in this case, there is no ancestor position because it's not in anything, it's only inside the body. So it's actually going to act similar to a relative element. If I do left zero, top zero, that's actually going to be from the page or the body or the viewport of the browser. So I'm saying put this image top left zero of the viewport and Z index negative one. So it goes behind the paragraph tag now comes up to the top and the H1 and the paragraph tag are on top of each other because the image is behind. And I can do this with Z index. So we're learning these two elements. We learn position elements, we learn Z index. We're gonna be using these on our coding exercise to make our complete application. Let's go over Z index one more time. Make sure it's crystal clear. 
let's go over to polaroidexample.html. So I'm going to exit the slides. I'm going to go back to brackets. I'm going to open up number two and open up the HTML file. Here is our Polaroid example. So we saw this before. Okay, I got a bunch of Polaroids. If there's enough space, they'll be side by side. When I hover over, I want the Polaroid to be on top. Okay, in this case, it's not happening. So we looked at this before, but it may not have made a bunch of sense because we didn't talk about position elements yet. And we didn't talk about the Z index property. So we're going to review this Polaroid example. If I want the Polaroid to be on top after I hover over it, the first requirement is it must be a position element. So on the Polaroid class, I'm going to put a position of relative. Okay, that's relative to its normal flow. Okay, so it's a positioned element. Right now, it's still on the bottom. After I hover over, I want it to be on the top. So how can I do that? Remember, the default Z index is zero. So after I do a hover, which is right here, I'm going to change the Z index. So let's change the Z index to one. Now, this only works on position elements. So if I hover over, you'll see the bowler right now is on top of the others. If I take this out, position relative, and I still do a Z index, okay, you'll see it doesn't work. Z index can only work on positioned elements. And it only works on three, relative, absolute, and fixed. So I use one of the three, relative. I do Z index one, hover over, you'll see the Polaroid is now on top of the other overlapping Polaroids. Now what developers do is one may be a little dangerous because in some cases maybe this one has a Z index of one or this one has a Z index of two. So what I'll see a lot of developers do in the industry is they may put a thousand here or a hundred there. That way it'll ensure that it's on the top just in case some of these other elements have a Z index of one already. If the Z indexes are equal, then it matters which one is loaded last. So some developers will put a really high number, which will ensure that it is on top. In this case, I know one will be on top because I didn't do Z index anywhere else. So in this case, I'm going to apply one there. That way you can see this is the same example as we did before. And hopefully that's making a little bit more sense than it did previously. Okay, we are finally to the point we're gonna make a complete application. We just saved this file. We're gonna go over to Git. We're gonna save it by doing a commit. And then we're going to finally make our complete application. So before we end this video, let's go over to Git. I'm gonna do a Git status. You'll see one file has been modified. So I need to add that file. I'm gonna do a Git add. I'm gonna add number two, Polaroid example, CSS three, Polaroid example.html. So I'm adding that to the stage. Do another Git status. You'll see it turned green, and I'll do a git commit because I only want to commit that one, and we'll say finished our Polaroid example. Okay, you'll see I did two insertions, two deletions, and one file has been changed. If I do a git status, okay, you'll see nothing has been added to the commit, but there are some untracked files. Some developers don't like seeing this, so you can actually add these files to the ignored case where it won't say they're untracked anymore. It just will say working directory clean. However, it's the same. I mean, depends on what you like to do. That option is available. You can add these to the ignored case and then they won't show up here. They'll be ignored automatically. The other option is just to add them to the tracked files. Even though they don't change, you add everything and let Git manage all the files for you. If I do a git log, you'll see I have two commits now. We finished the first example and we finished the second example. Okay, that's it for this video. We're going to go back to the slides. We're going to learn one more concept so you can understand what I'm doing in the code. And we're finally going to make our complete application. Stick with Professor Wergelis and we'll see you in the next video.